The markets are now entering the most critical stage of the altcoin and Bitcoin cycle. We are going through that churny sideways period. This is where a lot of investors get chopped up and lose the profits that they had once made in some of these small pumps that we've seen over the last six months. We're nearly 600 days into the move from the all-time high, the downside and the sideways period. So you've come a long way if you're still here in the market. So this video is gonna prepare you for what is happening right now in the market, how to avoid this bloodbath and what you can do in the future to best prepare yourself for those mega 10, 50, 100x gains that everyone bangs on about when it comes to the altcoin season. So let's hit that like and subscribe to the channel. If you had already subscribed to our free crypto and economic report, that is in your email inbox right now. It went out last night. If you want to get a that free report with the next one, make sure you use the link in the top of the video description. So let's dive into what's happening in the markets right now, where the money is flowing to and from and what we can look out for. So first up is the BTC chart. This is on a weekly chart here. We have some major signals coming up for the crypto market, but for now we need to understand and assess the strength of Bitcoin and the strength or weakness of the cryptocurrency market. So I've got some key dates here. We've got the August top, the Feb top, the April top, then you've got the key lows, November, March, and May. And you can see the pattern of how significant the move to the upside was for Bitcoin and those key areas that Bitcoin has broken out of and seems to be retesting now. Of course, we're not trying to anticipate whether this is going to collapse or it's going to hold up. We've done that in previous videos. What we want to do now is figure out what is happening in the cryptocurrency market and if it is strong or weak. Is it the time to be getting in or should we be cycling out of cryptos? So looking at these particular uh, key areas in the market, those key turning points, now we can turn our attention to the altcoin market. So this is the total cryptocurrency market cap, excluding Bitcoin and ETH. So basically everything else out there. And you can see those dates show a very different picture. You can see you've got a very strong downtrend. Bitcoin, you've got an uptrend. And in the cryptocurrencies, you have a pretty strong downtrend. So that's the first thing to pay attention to. The next thing to pay attention to within the downtrend itself is how is this market holding up and what key areas are coming up next to be broken down if it doesn't hold up. So this is the current week right now. And you can see that the altcoin market has broken through its May lows very convincingly for now. And it's getting very close to that March low. Whereas for BTC, that March low is a long way off. If we use our measure, we can see that the low is still about 30% away from the, the low to the low. But if we use the low to the current closing price, we're at nearly 35% away. So that's a very different story in the altcoin market where we look at the low to the low, it's 1.4%, and to the current close price, it's only 2.3%. So it's likely that this low is going to get taken out, which would then mean further downside for the altcoin market, and potentially even taking out its December low, which it happened to do after it took out the November low. Whereas for Bitcoin, Bitcoin put in a higher low, which is why it's a stronger crypto. This is just based on the data from the chart, reading, how, uh, reading the TA, as per what investors are doing in the market. So if we've got that in mind and this low breaks and consolidates below that low, then we're in for more downside, potentially taking out these lower levels, which means overall cryptos are in a much weaker position than Bitcoin. Not my opinion, just what the chart is saying. It's in a very weak position compared to BTC. In addition to the traditional TA, we've got the moving averages. The moving averages are moving over and falling into a potential death cross. Basically, the faster moving average dropping under the slower moving average. We've got the 50 day going underneath the 200 day, and it looks like that's about to occur in the next few days if we continue at this pace to the downside, taking out those lows, potentially getting to that March area. So it's not looking good for the altcoin market. Remember, we're just focusing here on the altcoins, excluding Bitcoin and ETH. I won't continue to repeat that. Just keep, pay attention to what we're looking at here. So we're looking like we've got further downside. This can play out over weeks to potentially months as well. We've got a lot to get through in terms of the overall structure here, but we've got that to contend with. This death cross potentially coming up. We had the golden cross where the faster moving average goes over the slower moving average. Now we're coming back into a death cross. But overall, this isn't the worst thing that can happen at this point in time. 
because essentially it's going through this period here, like we saw in 2019 and 2020. We had a golden cross, then we had the death cross, then we had a golden cross, a death cross, and another golden cross. But you can see it was all contained within a particular trading range. So potentially that's what we have coming up here. The main thing is that some cryptos aren't going to survive and will continue falling, whereas others may just hold up, getting ready for that next move whenever that next altcoin season comes. And whenever that altcoin season comes, we'll be ready. We can measure these time frames. So we can go from the current low to the breakout points, which are around this area here. You can see the market starting to trend up and then started to break the highs. You've got the first high broken through here at 540 days and then the next high. So there's a high here and a high here, the market breaking through that area about 600 days later. So if in fact, this is our low here in December, then if we wanna measure out about 600 days, that gives us a, a time target of about October, bring it back a little bit, we're in about August. So basically summertime of 2024, take it back 500 days, about May. So basically that spring into summer of next year. So we've got a bit of a time target here where we could see some downside. So if we've got that in mind, it allows us to set up our patience in the market and not get too carried away with trying to buy up every single dip when it comes to altcoins. The other piece to the puzzle we've been looking at is the Wyckoff schematic. Now the Wyckoff schematic is very different on the Bitcoin chart. We've seen Bitcoin basically break through getting into phase D, holding up at these levels, just waiting for the last points of supply to play out, basically the last amount of supply in the market before it can start to shoot higher. That could be months away. But in, in the, the case of the uh, total cryptocurrency market, BT, uh, excluding Bitcoin and ETH, your altcoins, your shit coins, your scams, whatever. You can see this is in a very different phase of the Wyckoff accumulation schematic. It looks like we're still trekking our way through phase B. We're seeing the A, the selling climax, the little pump up. Then we've moved into phase B. We've got the secondary test move, and maybe it could even be a further downside move here where C comes in later in 2023, which basically lines up with what's happening at the moment with this downtrend, with what's happening with the moving averages crossing over backwards and forwards, with also what's happening with the timeframes that we've been looking at when it comes to the overall accumulation period within a trading range. Like we saw probably 500 or so days, 550, up to about 600 days. So overall, this looks like the phase B of the Wyckoff schematic, and we're still trying to find our way into phase C with the springtime, the test, potentially moving over here. We don't have confirmation of that yet, which is why I leave it here at December. But once we do get a breakdown, it's probably likely that we'll have to move this shakeout test to the side. Not there yet. Let's continue to watch that. Nonetheless, we're still a couple of phases behind where Bitcoin is currently at. Meaning for a long-term position, it's probably not wise to be getting into the market until we've confirmed a phase C. And to confirm a phase C, we need to get a breakout to the upside, breaking some of the top side of those trading ranges. So yes, we're not gonna get the exact bottom, but we wanna make sure that we are getting into a market that is trending up into a bull market, not just continuing to test the upper side supply of the market, which then continues to dump down on the market, causing further lows. These are trading ranges, probably not buy and hold ranges for months to years until that next altcoin season pops up. So I've looked at where this market currently is at, what we're looking out for in the future. Now we can have a look for the cryptos which are in a stronger or weaker position than BTC. And I've done a quick post here on Twitter. So if you wanna follow, Links are right here in the video description. Use those links. Don't get scanned out there by other accounts impersonating my account. I only have one of those accounts. So use that if you want to be sure of the account that's following. So several, uh, a simple seven-step guide to surviving an altcoin bloodbath. This right here is the Bitcoin benchmark. You can see Bitcoin over the last seven days has been down 3.2%. So anything that is less than 3.2%, uh, when we're looking at it against the USD value, it means it's been holding up relatively well against Bitcoin. Now, there's a few questionable cryptos in here, which over the long term probably won't hold up, but we do have a few that may hold up 
pretty well against BTC. Maybe even XRP based on a few other fundamentals that have been going on over the last couple of years. It didn't see that massive pump like everything else during 2021. Maybe it'll get its time in 2024. So it is looking not too bad compared to a lot of these others. But everything else has been absolutely destroyed against BTC and also against USD, while Bitcoin has only been down a few percent. So the rest of this goes on to have a look at uh, crypto is basically a tool to earn more BTC, points three and four. Some cryptos will have short-term strength against, against Bitcoin, but very few will manage to maintain those gains. So be aware of that if any of these altcoins are in your portfolio. If your uh, beloved altcoin continues to die, like basically most of them will, then it might be a good idea to rotate out of those to big Bitcoin or ETH and wait on the sidelines until we get that mega altcoin season, which we've looked at here for many reasons why and how this could possibly be happening over the next 500 or so days. Now, if you want an easy way to figure out which altcoins are holding up against Bitcoin, check out something like CoinGecko. Use the top here and change it from US dollar or whatever currency you're in to BTC. Then you can go down and have a look at what Bitcoin has done and compare those cryptocurrencies. These ones here, well, at least the three percenters are basically stable coins, so you can wipe those out straight away. You can see ETH is actually up 1% against Bitcoin over the week. And like we saw earlier, something like XRP is also up. The rest of these are getting destroyed against the Bitcoin value. And because Bitcoin is going down, they're also getting destroyed against USD value. And like we saw, like I just mentioned, it is in a mega downtrend. So it's something not to play with if you want to be holding up for some mega gains later on, because at the moment, everything is in a long-term downtrend. Short-term pumps, long-term downtrend. What does that long-term downtrend look like? Look no further than Solana, Solana BTC. We've covered this looking at the Wall Street cheat sheet, looking at the complacency at the top, the denial, the anxiety, the next dump, and the continued dumps ahead. So to me, this really looks like we're in this stage of anger into depression. Very different to what's going on with Bitcoin. Bitcoin looks like it's in the disbelief. Cryptos look like they're still going through this stage here. Just take a look at that on the chart where you can see the market drop. You get into some uh, capitulation. Anxiety happens again. And then potentially more anger. You got another bounce. Have a look at that there. And then it just continues to bleed out. We're looking for a breakdown of these significant lows here in April, and then again, significant lows here in December. Note what chart we're on here. We're looking at Solana versus BTC, and these are going to be the key charts to look at in order to hold your position, in order to hold your funds that you've been uh, investing into the market. This is basically where the long-term gains are made or lost. So these cryptos might be looking pretty good on the USD chart, but if you flick it over to a uh, Bitcoin pairing chart, you can see just how bad the move to the downside is. There really isn't much hope in that move. You can see most of these swings continue to remain with the trend, with the odd breakout to the upside. The trend remains. There is not a bit of break in this entire move to the downside, a small little break here within a tight range. But overall, the trend is very heavily down. If this continues to break down, that means money is fleeing the altcoin and going back into Bitcoin. It's basically like trying to compare Bitcoin to the US dollar. If you see Bitcoin going up, that means the US dollar is weakening. If you see the chart of the altcoin against Bitcoin going up, that means it's getting stronger against Bitcoin, whereas right now it's getting weaker against Bitcoin. And the job is very, very simple as an investor. Stay in Bitcoin until the cycle turns around. Now, with all of that in mind, you can really start to see how bad many of these cryptocurrencies are doing. They really haven't gone anywhere for the longer term investor. Buying back in middle of 2021, it's gone nowhere. In fact, it's actually gone down. Buying at the end of 2022, at the bottom of the market, you're now losing money against BTC. So this is Matic here, same sort of deal here. Basically a lot of complacency bounces. For the trader, very, very different story. Lots of money to be made to the upside, to the downside, to the upside, to the downside. But for that person who just wants to buy on spot and hold and wait for the next altcoin season, which typically comes around once every four years, then there's a lot of pain involved and pretty much probably 
no gains to be had especially with older cryptos from 2021. This continues to break down and make new lows, lows that it hasn't seen since July of 2022, going back nearly one year. And it looks like it's going to continue the trend to the downside. So pay very close attention to these altcoins. Cardano, another one of those, breaking to fresh lows of late and potentially even going to break down of the March low, a very key low in the markets. So that breaks, you're looking further back to other significant low areas. This is all part of that Wall Street cheat sheet where it has to go through a, a crushing, a bleeding out of the money before we can start to get a turnaround. However, don't believe that all of these altcoins are going to get that turnaround and push back to new all-time highs. It may not happen for a lot of them, like we've seen in previous altcoin cycles. So that may have been a bit of a dark, depressing video, but at the end of the day, this is your money. It depends on what you want to do with your money in the market. If you want to disregard everything in the video, by all means, but this is essentially what the markets are telling us. They are showing us that there are significant downtrends across cryptocurrencies everywhere. Almost 99.9% .9 of them have lower highs, lower lows forming, and they continue to fall past key significant low levels. The total three market cap is an easy one to follow to give us a broad idea about what's going on over all of cryptocurrencies. So I would pay particular attention to this. Watch some of these death crosses and golden crosses coming up. Keep an eye on those timeframes like we do here on the channel because this basically isn't going to be over anytime soon just based on the data from the charts and what we've seen in the past. And of course, I'll be here again on the channel tomorrow to follow up with more of the crypto, Bitcoin and stock market news out there. Make sure you have subscribed. Hit that like button if you found some value from it. And of course, our free crypto and economic report is going out to you again in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully you enjoyed that report and I'll see you back here at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.